Okay, I am back with the second part of Stockholders Equity Quiz Solution. Um, all right, trying to get through this. I'm actually I'm in quite a bit of pain right now, guys. But uh, I, I left off. We're kind of tapered on number seven, and we'll get through this. Um, anyway, so number seven set up as before. Uh, we have the total proceeds. Here's the total proceeds. And we're determining first the amount allocated to preferred stock, so the carrying value of preferred stock. And we really want, the question is really asking for the additional paid in capital right here. So we're going to have to subtract out the preferred par value. So you do the math. The market price of the preferred by itself is 100. The market price by, of the common by itself is 60. So the ratio is 100 over 160. Um, it's a little easier to do the math if you just multiply through the numerator first. So 145, 145,000 times 100,000 divided by 160,000. That's going to be 90,625. Subtract out the preferred par value, and you'll get additional paid in capital preferred stock, 40,625. All right, number eight, Green Door Day Corporation has uh, 200,000 shares, eight dollar par value common stock. They declare a 10% stock dividend when the fair value is 66, which is going to matter because this is a small stock dividend. 8A, that's a small stock dividend, less than 20-25%. As I told you, I'll give you strictly below 20 and above 25. Um, by what amount is retained earnings decreased as a result of the stock dividend? If it's a small stock dividend, it's at market value. So small at market. So we're going to have to multiply times at $66 per share. How many shares are going to be distributed? It's the uh, dividend percent, 10%, times the number of shares outstanding before the stock dividend, 200,000. So it's 20,000 times 66, or 1.32 million. By what amount does total stockholders equity change as a result of the stock dividend? Uh, zero. Stock dividends don't change total stockholders' equity, small or large, doesn't matter. It's the answer to that question. We're going to do some treasury stock transactions. The first one says record uh, the, the journal entry related to the February reissuance. The reissuance. So, yikes. Okay, reissuance. So we, uh, let's see, blah, 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 January, they bought back 500 shares at 8 so anything above 8 is going to increase additional paid in capital. Anything below 8 is going to reduce additional paid in capital treasury stock until it's zero and then retain earnings. So in February, they reissued 200 shares at 10 bucks per share. So that's happy face because they're reselling it more than they bought it for. So here's the cash. The market price is 10 times 200 shares is 2,000. The treasury stock comes out at its cost of 8 times 200 shares repurchase is 1600 So you could plug the credit to additional paid in capital treasury stock of 400 The other thing you could have noticed is 10 minus 8, which is the treasury stock cost less the market price at reissuance, times 200 is also 400 but you could just plug it. That's fine. Now we're going to have a March reissuance, so let's see what the facts say. 300 shares at 4, which is way below 8. So there's going to be some additional debits here. The cash they receive is $4 per share times 300 shares is 1200 The 300 shares come out at cost, so it's like inventory accounting. 8 bucks times 300, that's where the 2400 comes from. Now, first we have to use up all the additional paid in capital treasury stock, and that will give us 400. Okay. Then the remainder has to come from retained earnings. So if we exhaust additional paid in capital treasury stock account, then we pull the remainder from retained earnings. All right. And the ending balance in additional paid in treasury stock is zero. And I just asked this question. To just bring it home. Um, I didn't want to see you. Sh you should not have a debit balance in a any contributed capital account at all. Okay. 
they only keep track of contributions, so it has to be the case that they have credit balances. All right, here's some property dividend questions. What by what amount is retained earnings decreased as a result of the property dividend? Um, the retained earnings account specifically, um, and this isn't like the other one where it was right at declaration, but here I would say the fair value because they're talking about the specific account. And in B, what is the net change to total stockholders equity as a result of this property dividend? Here's where I'd throw in the gain. So if you remember, the journal entry would have been retain earnings, a declaration prop div payable, and this would have been two million, two million. But in addition, since you've committed to disposal, what you have to do is, this is investment dash bonds, You have to mark these to market. All right. And doing so would uh, increase stockholders' equity. So the net effect on total stockholders' equity is uh, equal to the carrying value or the book value of the property distributed. All right, so that is uh, the stockholders' equity, stockholders' equity questions. Um, yeah, so that's it.